Lynn, you can begin. Okay, right on. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Okay, so to begin, I'd like to say hello, everyone. My name is Stephen, and today I'm going to share with you my story. And later there will be a Q&A, and I will answer all of your questions. So to begin, don't give up hope in the face of adversity. In June of 2015, I graduated from university with a degree in religious and indigenous studies. I couldn't be happier that my time had come to an end. It was at this time I had chosen to use my summer break as my time to reconnect with myself, to reflect, and better understand the direction I wanted to continue. At this time, during the months of June and July, I decided to work on a website where I attached my own articles of spiritual ideologies that affect people in these modern times. Furthermore, in June, I was asked to be an Indigenous professor's assistant with him for a 10-day course titled Living with the Land. This was on the Indigenous Reservation. I had also applied to teach English as a second language in Thailand and Myanmar. However, nothing could prepare me for what was to follow. On a beautiful August day, when I was driving down the highway, looking at the road ahead, when all of a sudden, I lost control of the vehicle. The vehicle collided into the rock cut on the side of the highway. The vehicle flipped onto the driver's side with the door frame pinning my head against the asphalt. It was a single vehicle accident and no one else was injured. The police said the 911 call came in at about 5.33 p.m. EMS and the fire department were dispatched and arrived at the scene. The firefighters had to use the jaws of life to cut me out from the car wreck, and this was the actual scene of the event. My father, mother, sister, and her boyfriend were notified to meet the police at the hospital. They waited, unknowing of the repercussions that awaited them. They continued to ask themselves a million of questions. They said the experience was surreal and endless. My injuries were so severe that the doctor did not know if I would survive the night or make a recovery from my injuries. The doctors told my family that my father, Dean, sister, Sabrina, and mother, Louisa, could come into the energy room and see me. The moment was far too real for my family. Their thoughts were seeking any and all possibility that this had all been a mistake. But then the curtain was pulled back and they saw my lifeless body, my scalp ripped off and at the moment, my family was scared from the sight of my broken, damaged brain and body. I was moved to the ICU unit. ICU doctors tell my family, my injuries are life-threatening. I was unconscious, in a deep coma. I had 15% chance of surviving the night. Doctor says, we have to wait and see if he makes it through the night. My parents had notified me that at this point in ICU, I'm attached to life support. Add an assigned nurse 24 seven, while she also had to monitor all the machines connected to me. The hospital, also taken precaution to strap down my arms and legs 
to avoid any fatal disasters of waking up and pulling out the needles and the tubes. So my parents went home to look for any signs of suicide note or something. I left my computer open on the kitchen table charging. My parents went to the basement and found my iPad on the couch. Then they went upstairs to inspect my bedroom and they found nothing out of the ordinary. This is what they find, my messy room. <laughs> Upon returning to the hospital, the orthopedic surgeon notified my parents that I had been posturing. In return, this has caused a large amount of movement to my right leg. Then the orthopedic surgeon took an x-ray and found I had broken my right tibia. It was his recommendation to insert a metal plate and six pins. Afterwards, there had been no more complications with my leg. The CT scan showed the doctors that I've su sustained a severe brain injury with bleeding in multiple areas of my brain. My head had swollen three times its size. The neurosurgeon wanted to operate and place a cerebral shunt inside my brain to reduce the swelling and the pressure. There was the possibility that I would not survive the surgery and another high risk being an infection in my brain. My neuro assessment showed that my eye pupils were dilating. They were sluggish. My eyes were flickering and both of my arms and legs were posturing. So I received another CT scan. It showed the swelling in my brain had decreased and on its own, so surgery would not be performed. However, the CT scan showed blood in my brain stem, which is responsible for heart rate breathing, and consciousness. The doctors notified my parents that blood in the brainstem would lead, would lead to severe impairments. Doctors recommended that a tracheotomy be performed for long-term ventilation. It was also recommended that a gastronomy tube, G-tube, for long-term feeding. Doctors told my parents that I had a catastrophic brain injury. There was internal bleeding inside my brain. Doctors were concerned that I was not responding to any of the doctor's commands. The doctor kept asking, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. And there was no response. However, I was tracking my mother's voice that the doctors told her I was only displaying primitive reflexes and not responding to her voice. Day 10, the doctor said to my parents, take a look at Stephen. This may be the best he'll ever be connected to all these machines. Would Stephen want to live connected to all these machines? My parents became very upset, especially my mother. My parents walked around the hospital and discussed that it would be way too early to know if I would ever recover from my coma. They told the doctor that Stephen would want to live. So my parents fought for my life and thank God they fought for my life because if they haven't, I wouldn't be here today. 
It was on day 15, August 22nd. I had awoken from my coma and I was still unresponsive. I was diagnosed as permanent vegetative state. However, I was touching my face, picking my lips and picking my chin. The doctors claimed all movements were primitive reflexes that may be caused by infection, disease, and or injury to the frontal lobes of the brain. Later, I could lift my right leg, my right hand, grab a small ball, pick up a coin, and even raise an eyebrow. Then, it was at this point, I was moved from the ICU to the neurology floor. My sister came to visit me and we listened to music and played thumb war. Also, it was in this unit, I kept trying to pull out all the tubes from my arms, throat, and stomach. So my mother refused the physical and chemical restraints they wanted to give me. And she pulled up a chair and slept by my bedside. After a number of days, the doctors collapsed the balloon for my trachea and the hospital allowed me to breathe through my, the trachea, my nose and mouth. I was still not responding to doctors. However, when the doctor was going to leave the room, my father told me, wave goodbye. And so I did. This was the start of something new because I finally gave my mom a thumbs up for the first time. She asked me if it would be all right if my dad brought my dog Rio to come visit me. This made me so happy. I was so excited to see my little boy Rio. I was fitted for a wheelchair in order to get me around and see the specialists in the hospital. On my free time, my mother brought me down to the medicine lodge to participate in the sharing circle. This is when I felt I made a very strong connection with the keeper from the medicine lodge at the hospital. When I was wheeled back to my room from the medicine lodge, I started crying. My mom thought I was just having old memories and I was remembering what actually happened. When I was placed on my bed, I kept trying to pull myself up onto my knees and I was in pain. My face was red and two nurses came into the room to assist me back into bed. The last day I had a bowel movement was 25 days prior to being admitted to the hospital. I was in pain. I continued to be agitated and pulled out my trachea and my mother called for help. And four nurses came in it was decided to leave the trachea out and I'd be placed on medicine for stomach pains and slept the night and the whole next day. Then the following day, I woke up and heard the announcement, cancel code blue. So I whispered, cancel code blue. My mom is asking, are you, are you talking? What are you talking? She asked me to repeat what I said to her. She said, ask me the question again. What were they calling for? Then I said, cancel code blue. She was so happy, so happy. It was at this point that I started talking and I was talking to my parents 
I was answering the doctor's questions and my parents decided to call family and I was speaking to them as well. Now, I have to continue the work if I'd like to see myself get better. Either it be with my speech, my writing, exercises, or activities, I want to resume my life as normally as possible. If I would like to do something correctly, I need to learn a new skill that will accommodate me doing it even better. Also, I would like to notify my listeners that you control the label you place over yourselves as either being successful or not. So always take the initiative in understanding that by being positive and grateful, that is the first step in healing. There will always be a time for you to get better. You just got to believe it. I had to relearn how to walk, talk, and think again. I had no idea what was what after I awoke from my coma. As I've been told upon the moments of awakening, I was unable to process anything. However, I can recall the smallest moments in the hospital being with my family. My mother and father who actively tried to engage me in doing tasks and activities, always trying to keep me busy. When I said I had to relearn how to walk, talk and think again, I wasn't joking. I needed to relearn how to find my balance all over again, especially when it came to walking up and down the stairs. At the same time, I was learning from the indigenous lodge keeper in the hospital. I was learning the grandfather teachings. I learned how to be humble and grateful for myself and for other people. I was working with an occupational therapist with my left hand at the kinds of fine motor activities like holding a ball, placing them in specific areas, grip strength, and other exercises too. And at this time, I was working with my speech and language. I was working with my speech and language therapist because I was being very tangential by thinking a lot of different things all at once. And this was the area that psychology was trying to teach me how to perceive things differently. I was discharged from the hospital on December 22nd, four and a half months after my accident. I was so joyful. I was so joyful. On this day, it was my very Merry Christmas. In the new year of 2016, I continue to have old memories of when I used to dance with my sister. So I asked her if she wanted to try. She said yes. And so my mother also told me this would help my walking tremendously. And so she enlisted me and my sister into dance. The first time I walked to the deep end of the pool, I didn't think I had to float. So. I took in a big gulp of water. Learning to swim was a real need because not only did I swim competitively in school, but I lived on a lake too. Over time, I relearned how to swim the backstroke, breaststroke, and the front crawl. This really brought me joy because I could swim over half a dozen laps before I stopped. So one might think, was I ever determined to drive again? I started with the driver rehabilitation program at the hospital. And the first stage had been to drive with a driving instruct 
instructor and pass my area of accident without showing any signs of fear. Then I transitioned to a stage two. Here, I demonstrated I can drive for an extended period of time, being four hours. And at this time, I have driven over 90 hours in the last two years with my driving instructor. I can drive in over five cities on highways, 400 series in rush hour traffic. And for that, I'm totally grateful. I also have taken a balance test on a paddleboard and all I have to say is good luck if the water's rough. Chances are you're going in. <laughs> then I decided to strap on a snowboard and relearn how to do it all over again. This meant going down the bunny hill about 50 times. Here, I learned to balance to my heels and my toes. The same day, I tried a blue square. And after I felt comfortable with my first run, I decided to turn it up a notch. Slow, 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 D Steve, slow down. Yeah. Make the impossible possible. Then you're already halfway there. Yeah, you got time. I also got better at finer activities such as skating. I'm now able to skate fast, cross my skates over another, to gradually turn, and I can even skate backwards. The first time I grabbed the bike, I was really unsure how things would turn out. But when I did, everything came back. <laughs> then I tried rock climbing, and was I ever tired? But I really enjoyed this challenge. Now, I will get to my therapies and the work I've done over the past four and a half years, like my vision therapy. Like my vision therapy has taught me how to control the interior muscles of the eyes to merge my vision. However, I am still working on this and in August, it will be five years. I've done Nate allergy elimination with files to see if they would pass through my energy body, pass through my 12 meridians in a time period of 25 hours. I've also completed 350 hours at Under Pressure Inc. This involves me entering a hyperbaric chamber, sealed tight with bulletproof glass, pumped with 100% oxygen, while being compressed under 30 meters of pressure, all to help my brain heal and build new neural pathways inside my brain. Dr. Daniel Amen reviewed my brain scans and recommended supplements to help heal my brain. To the left is a healthy brain, and to the right is a specked image of my injured brain. So before COVID started, I was getting ready to start my stage three therapy of PONTS. This therapy was created by Paul Harsh which is popularly mentioned in the book titled The Brain's Way of Healing Itself by Norman Deutsch. This device stimulates three areas of the brain. That is responsible for balance and walking. These areas of the brain involve the brainstem, the midbrain, and the cerebellum. 
Here I am working with a team to treat the neurons inside my brain. This therapy enhances my cerebral blood flow by offering specific areas infrared light. This helps create and build new neural pathways. Here is some of the work I've accomplished in my career. First, I've published my first book in the, in the fall of September 2017, titled That Book of Mine, which had been in front of an audience. In my book, I add my philosophy of truthinism, then offer insights of how I re-grip this reality. Then I published my second book titled Eternity Inside the Mind. To begin, I explain my philosophy to a greater extent. Then I get into the work of how I came to understand eternity inside my mind. The two certificates I demonstrate are my certifications in being a life coach and a master life coach. I presented my story in over five cities, eight times. I presented in cities up north and down south. I've presented with my mom for a corporation and for myself. Before the accident, I wanted to be an author, a presenter, and a business owner, even after my accident, which was next to impossible. In a movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, he wakes up every day being the same grumpy Groundhog Day. So he decides to learn something new every day. Later, this brings him joy. My journey is truly like no other. I'm stuck reliving the same day over and over again. So I want to do new things because I know I can get better and this will bring me happiness. I can live in the opportunity of a new tomorrow that I didn't live yesterday. So I want you to really take away the key points I have to offer you. First one being, my family are people who strive at my best interests at heart. Second, healthy lifestyle, staying true to your health in every moment. Third, attend your therapies because this is your work you can do to get you better. Fourth, try new activities because doing something is better than doing nothing. Fifth, don't take things too serious and just laugh at the funny things. And six, I accept me, Stephen 2.0. By offering positive attitude, you can develop and build a better you. Accept the change. Thank you.